In a world of YouTube videos that talk about the new Apple Silicon Macs that talk about video and photo production and benchmarks, one software developer brings you the scoop on what the new M1 chip means for us, developers. Today I'm reviewing a tool that we're all familiar with as developers, Visual Studio Code. Does it work on the new M1 Apple Silicon chip or not? Well, yes and no. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Alex. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. You'll help me out quite a bit. So I got my Apple Silicon M1 MacBook Air and I've been doing some comparisons with my MacBook Pro. See the video I just recently did about building NX workspaces. And if you are interested in me covering some other builds, JavaScript world or .NET, let me know down in the comments below. So what we're doing today has to do with only the MacBook Air and specifically Visual Studio Code, right? We as developers use this all the time, every day, day in and day out. Now Microsoft is working very hard on getting the new Visual Studio Code for the M1 chip ready for you, but they do have an insider's build, the experimental build they call it. How do you get the experimental build? Let's take a look. Go to google.com search for VS Code M1, okay? You have to search for that one because what you wanna do is get the Insiders build. So eventually you'll find download Visual Studio Code Insiders. You can also search for Visual Studio Code Insiders. Click on that. Now, this is the normal Insiders build Microsoft publishes every night with the features that are coming out next month. I usually use this one alongside with my regular Visual Studio Code so I can run them side by side. Now, you don't wanna get this one. What you wanna do is download this ARM64 experimental version right down here. I've already done that and it's nice orange color right down here. So let's check it out. How quickly does it work? I'm gonna close out of Chrome here and I'm gonna pop open Visual Studio Code and we're gonna see how long this takes. So this is the regular Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna click on that icon. You'll see the icon bouncing for a few seconds. We're gonna do a countdown here and see how long it takes. And finally, it opens up. There we go. So that took a while. And if you're doing this a lot during the day, it could get pretty annoying. I've also reported here that I've seen some sluggishness sluggidity, sluggosity by clicking around in Visual Studio Code. And uh, I can't really explain what it is, but there is a little bit of slowness to it. This was just with Visual Studio Code without any extensions. Now let's click on Visual Studio Code Insiders. This is the experimental build and see how long that takes. Boom, that opened up in about a second. So right away you can see an insanely fast open up time in the new build. Now, let's go a little bit further. These were consistent with the results I got before I installed any plugins, any extensions for Visual Studio. But, you know, I went ahead and tried to simulate a real world developer workstation and we have a lot of extensions that we like to use. I personally try to use as little extensions as possible, but I did install some of my favorite ones here as well as some of the other more popular ones. So let's take a look at what I got. Here are the installed extensions that I have. Angular Language Service, Angular Snippets, ESLint, GitLens, HTML Snippets, Live Server, Prettier, TSLint. I know, I know, TSLint. I still love TSLint, but unfortunately we have to say goodbye to it. Veecher and VS Code Icons. I have the exact same set here on the Insiders Edition. As you can see, the startup times still took that amount of time. Now, some of these extensions don't trigger for every single file type. So let's take a look at a project and see how working with the project feels in both of these. All right, so I'm gonna pull this one over to the side. The one on the right is the Insiders build and the one on the left is the regular build. And I do have a project here. This is the one I created last time when I compared NX Workspace performance with the MacBook Pro. So I'm gonna drag this over here into VS Code, open that up in there, and then also in the Insiders build. Now, there are a couple of extensions that are missing. That's why it's complaining to me. It did detect that I'm running NX Workspaces and it offered to install the NX console. Okay, so even opening the project takes a little bit of time there. 
Now I just want to say that to be fair on my MacBook Pro, Visual Studio Code opens up just fine, just as fast as the Insiders build on the new M1 chip. So here is MacBook Pro. I'm gonna open up the regular build of Visual Studio Code and you'll see how quickly that works. So yeah, it takes about maybe a second and a half to two seconds, just about the same amount of time the, the Insiders build takes on the MacBook Air with the M1 chip. So something is weird about the translation into the Intel build that's happening here. I think they do it through Rosetta, but I'm not 100% sure. They must use some kind of translation and Rosetta is it for the M1 chips. So that translation is taking a little bit of time and that's why I think that, this is just a guess by the way, that's why I think it's taking a little bit longer for VS Code to open that on the M1 chip. If there are any other tests you want me to do with the M1 processor and some kind of performance software, let me know down in the comments below. I'd appreciate that. All right. So what are we doing here? Well, I wanna see what app we have. We have an Angular app here and I wanna use one of my snippets for Angular applications. This is John Papa's Angular snippets. And uh, let's go ahead and create a new file here. I'll just call it cmp.component.ts. All right, so this is just gonna be a component and I'm gonna use the Angular snippets, a dash, and it's not coming up. Let's see, a dash, nope, there it is. So that took a while. Not sure why that took so long the first time around, but a dash, okay, finally it came up. Now let's try the same thing on the insiders build, apps, to do's, source, app. We already have that component there. I'm gonna create a new one, cmp2.component.ts. All right, let's do the snippets on this one. A dash, and that comes up instantly. I didn't even notice any lag at all, A dash. So I don't know if this is a good test or not, but the first time I did this on the VS Code regular build for Intel, it took a while to do that. Subsequent tries don't take that long. If I try to create a service, same thing. So the snippets are working fine now. I wonder if it has to do with being the first time to do it. I'm gonna close this out, don't save. Close this one out, don't save. And let's try this one more time. There we go. Let's open up that recent project. Yeah, you can even see the difference in opening up the recent project. I clicked on the one for the insiders build after this one. I didn't even click on them at the same time. And that one came up first. So let's try to do another component here, a dash and that takes a little bit of time, a dash instant. So there is some benefit to using the M1 chip here with the Insiders build for Visual Studio Code. Now this is not a production ready version yet, but I'm sure the production ready version will be even more complete, but this is pretty usable for an editor. Just make sure you save often. So that's it for me for today. Thanks for joining me on this video on this journey of exploring the new Apple Silicon M1 from a developer's point of view. If you did like this video or find it helpful or entertaining, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks.